Happy Halloween, everyone! And before I start this review, I just want to tell you, please watch the first episode of School Life before you start this review, please. I'll give you time, because this review is going to spoil that very first episode. So, here's some time to pass by, just to, yeah, just to watch the anime. Yeah, you got, you got time, and so, or you can skip straight to the review if you don't want to watch, to watch the horror, because... Trust me, if you watch this, the next part, you'll be scared to life, so click that link before you get scared. So yeah, in, so you're going to be scarred for life in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I think I warned you. Oh, well, was well, that the scariest thing you ever seen? So, let's begin our review. Hello everyone, I'm Joe Yu, welcome to another edition of Yu and Anime Review, and this episode, Gaku Kurashi, also known as School Live. Our story starts off as four generic Moe girls are spending their time at school. There is an airhead, tomboy, serious girl, and a big sister. Also, there is a dog. Sounds pretty generic so far. Here's the twist. They form the school living club, meaning they live at their school. Wait, why do they live at their school? Everything seems fine to start, but then reality kicks in and it turns out that these girls are living in the zombie apocalypse. How's that for a twist? The story tells the beautiful and hopeful story of four girls trying to enjoy their last days of school. What I mean is, despite the circumstances the girls live in, they try to go on about their lives as normal as possible, as if nothing happens. And it tells this beautiful story that no matter how bad things are, there is always hope. The reason why the girls try to act as normal as possible is because Yuki has pretty much lost it, and decides not to see the reality of all the bad things. However, because of her joyous personality, the other girls play along with her, as it also gives them that needed break from the horrors. Now, the story is not told exactly in order, so the pacing feels off, but at the same time, it felt like it was done on purpose to really throw us off. There is a mixture of lighthearted plots to more serious, intense plots. But during the lighthearted moments, it really feels like it was dragging on because the interesting parts of the plot are during dark and serious times. Also, the ending felt too convenient, and there is quite a bit of plot holes in the ending. But overall, the story is executed very well with its twists and turns. The main character is Yuki Takeya, a cheerful, air-headed, childish girl. Funny enough, she's the oldest out of all the main girls, and she's the upperclassman while the others are underclassmen. The biggest difference about her character is that she doesn't see the world for it is, and still thinks everything is normal in her eyes. And the first episode pulled this off perfectly, as we got to see what Yuki sees before we saw the reality of the world. She doesn't possess any particular talent, but her presence is much needed for the rest of the group as she provides them with relief as they take a break from the apocalypse. And I love her character development because as the show goes on, she starts to notice reality as we draw closer to conclusion, and it's plainly visible how strong she grows after her initial appearance. Kurumi Ebisawa, aka the best girl, is a tomboy of the group, while also being the dedicated badass. She's usually sent on doing the more dangerous stuff, because she is the quickest to adapt to the situation. With her trusty shovel, she protects the group from the zombies. I love how she is shown to be the strongest one of the group, but she's also at the same time vulnerable. Because deep down, 
she still is just a young girl, and we get to see what breaks her. Yuri Wakasa plays the big sister role of the school living club, while also the club president. She acts all motherly towards everyone, as she is usually very calm and mature. She cooks for everyone and keeps all their supplies and resources in check. Even though she puts up a strong resilient front, when she breaks down, she really breaks down mentally. She is probably surprisingly the most unstable member of the group. Miki Naoki is the last member of the school living club as she joined last. Her past is revealed later along the line. She plays the role of the straight girl. She doesn't understand Yuki's situation entirely and is confused whenever around her. When a group first picks up Miki, she is initially shy and fragile. However, over the course, she gains more confidence around her as she finds something to fight for and realizes what she has. The other Spunkas are Taomaru, a dog, and Megumi Sakura, their teacher, who suggested the idea of forming the club in the first place. I love the fact that all the characters play a role in helping each other out, and it's those interactions that really bring out the best of each character, and it shows how their relationship affects their decisions and personalities. I love the fact that we get to see what breaks the characters because these girls put on a deceiving, cute, cheerful front. If there is one thing that is very noticeable about the art style, is that it's really deceiving and clever. The characters and the world is drawn very cutely in Moe art. The characters all look Moe, and it's very contradicting to the whole apocalypse atmosphere. What I love about the art is how it separates Yuki from everything else. Something noticeable is Yuki's outfit, which is bright pink, whereas the others are green. And if you were to invert them, the green outfits become pink, while the pink becomes green. It's so cleverly done and hidden. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of zombie action. In fact, the majority of the time, you don't see the zombie clearly. Again, this is also done cleverly. The zombies are covered in black clouds at first, but as the anime goes on towards the end, they become clearer, indicating that Yuki is drawing closer to reality. And it's amazing how they did that with the art. They are simple animations, but the art style in general is all they really needed to give impact. The only thing I don't like what the animation decides to do from time to time is show fan service, especially if it's either supposed to be an emotional scene or just stuff for the sake of doing it, because the art does not really benefit from fan service. The score of the anime is okay, and it does its job. There's some nice soothing music along the line, but nothing really stands out and adds to the atmosphere of the scenes. The opening is quite enjoyable if you like upbeat music, it's very cute and upbeat, which is a contrast to the show in general. However, I do like how the opening animation changes each time as we draw closer to finale. The endings are much slower paced and fits very well with the show. Both songs have its sad vibe towards them, but at the same time, it lifts your hopes up and somewhat becomes a happy song about hope, and I love that about endings, giving signs of hope. At first, I did not really care that this anime looked cute and moe because I don't mind the moe art style at all. But the fact that there is a surprise in that very first episode, with that plot twist, I was all in on it, meaning I was always ready to watch the next episode as soon as it came out. Because I really want to know how these girls are surviving. And at the same time, it tells a beautiful story about hope. There's quite a bit of slice of life that can drag on, making you want more of the more interesting, serious parts of the show. But I'll consider this genre a slice of life first over supernatural horror. The characters are very entertaining to watch and it's interesting to see their development over the course of the show as they try to survive this dire situation they're in. Even though slice of life moments drag on, I feel like they're needed there to give you that hope that even in the dangerous most situations, there is still hope. And I love this anime for that. As we draw close to the end of the review, I give the story a 9 because the story is beautiful and I love stories about hope. The fact the twist at episode 1 pulled me into the show immediately is definitely an interesting and unique concept that pulls off their twist very cleverly. There are moments that drag and the ending felt a bit overly convenient but it's still a good story in general. For the animation sound, I give it an 8 and a 7. The animation art style is cleverly done, contrasting the Moe art style to the horror theme. The way they show Yuki's vision is done so cleverly as well. The animation is simple and there is quite a bit of unnecessary fan service. The soundtrack is nothing special and nothing really stands out, but I love the upbeat opening and the sad to the happy endings of the anime. The characters get a 9 from me. Every character is shown a soft side, but they are also shown a weak side. They all play a part in each other's lives and are given plenty of development over the course. 
by showing all the strengths and weaknesses. For my own personal enjoyment, I give it a 9. From the very first episode twist, I was hooked on to the show. I like my mo once in a while, but when they throw this wrench in my face, I couldn't keep my eyes off screen. And I was excited for every episode each week. I love stories about hope, and the character's development was very interesting. So for the overall score, after rounding it up, I give School Live an awesome 8.5 out of 10. It was my favourite anime of summer 2015 season. I recommend this anime to any fans of the MOA genre because despite the twist, it has enough elements from that genre to be enjoyable. I recommend this to anime fans who are looking for a story of hope and a supernatural fans at the same time. It's not necessarily a horror, but it has elements to which it adds the atmosphere. Well, that's it for this edition of your anime review. If you want to read the written review, the link is down below in the stream straight to my anime list. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. If you can't be bothered, go watch another video. With that all said and done, Sayonara.